Welcome to the Living Witness Broadcast. I'm your host, Pastor Derek Thomas, and my prayer today is that the message blesses you and inspires you to be all that you can be, to reach the world with the life-giving word. Enjoy today's message. God bless. Our text today is found in Mark, the 10th chapter, verses 46 through 52, and reads as follows from the King James Version of God's Holy Word. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out to Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said, verse 52, unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. One thing I love about this passage of scripture is the same thing that I love about Jesus and that it, 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 it's the truth. It stays the same. It doesn't change. And, and God is so awesome in that way. And as we look at our text today, we, we realize that, that, that what God desires to do for us is to meet us at our point of need. But in order to meet us at our point of need, beloved, we've got to become desperate for God. Amen. We've got to become so desperate for God that we'll let nothing and no one separate us, as the word of God says, from his love. And what happened here is that Bartimaeus made his mind up that he was going to get to Jesus no matter what. Now, Bartimaeus, understand, was blind. But in the midst of his blindness, he was able to see and comprehend that in order to get the things that God had for him, he had to do it through Jesus. He had to go to the Messiah. He had to go through the Messiah to get the word that God had for him to make him whole. God desires to do the same thing for us today, beloved. He desires to move by his spirit in our lives and move by his spirit through our lives to make a difference in the lives of others. But the only thing that stands in our way oftentimes is us. And God wants us church today to know that we don't have to stand in the way. When God has called us to be on the way. Amen. God has called us to be on the way. He's waiting for us to respond to him. He knows who we are and he knows what he's put in us. But God needs us to understand who we are and he needs us to understand what he's put in us. The name Bartimaeus literally means honorable son. So here we have a man that's blind, but that's already looked upon by God as honorable because he was named by his father Timaeus, which means honorable. Bartimaeus, which means honorable son, which means honor runs in that family. I want you to know today, beloved, that honor runs in your family too. It runs in your family. Yes, you right now that's watching that may say I'm not worth anything. You right now that's watching that may say, well, God doesn't love me. You right now that's watching that says there's no way can God let God can do that for me. I'm here to let you know that yes, he can. And yes, he will. See, Jesus met the one that was deemed honorable. And because uh, uh, Bartimaeus understood what honor was, because it was in his character and nature, he gave honor in his mind to whom he felt honor was due. And that was Jesus Christ. And because he began to give God honor, he, he was desperate. He's like, you know what? I, I, this, my, my sense of sight isn't working right now, but my faith, my sense of faith and perception of the Messiah and where he is, is working right now. So I'm going to begin to press my way using the senses that I have to obtain more from God so that I can be all that God desires me to be. God wants us to use the senses that we have. He wants us to use the gifts and talents and graces that we have by lifting them up and giving Jesus praise, by lifting them up and giving Jesus honor and glory and worship. God wants us to let him know that you're worth everything to me 
God. So though I might not be able to sing, I'm going to take the voice that you gave me and I'm going to lift it up and make a joyful noise unto you. Though I might not be able to pray, I'm going to take the few words that I know, God, and I'm going to present them to you with a sincere heart. Though I might not know how to preach, teach, and exegete, oh God, I'm going to take what you show me in my word and use it to be a witness to others because you said in the word to study to show myself approved unto you, oh God. I ask you to help me rightly divide the word of truth. See, God wants us to take what we have and he wants us to open our mouths and he wants us to cry out with desperation. He wants us to cry out in a fashion and at a level to say, God, if I can't get to you, I can't make it because I can't do this thing without you, God. I'm nothing without you, God. I need you today, God, because I know that you're there and I know that you're waiting for me to cry out. I'm crying loud and I'm sparing not. I don't care what the naysayers say, oh God. I don't care what those that say be quiet say, oh God. All I know is that I need and want to get to you today, oh God. I need and want to get to you because I know that there's something blessed coming my way from you, oh God. I know that there's something blessed coming to me as a result of you hearing my cry, oh God. Father God, I cry out to you, oh God. I'm crying out and I'm sparing not, Lord God. That's what Bartimaeus was doing. That's the prayer that he was praying in his heart and spirit. That's the mindset that he had. That's the same mindset that we have because as God is waiting for us to, to, to cry out, he's ready to move on our behalf when we do cry out. He's ready to move on our behalf when we do say, Lord, help. He's ready to move on our behalf when we say, Lord, I need you. See, Bartimaeus cried out and the enemy would love nothing more than to shut us up. The enemy would love nothing more than to help us, than, 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 than to encourage us or discourage us, I should say, to say that it's not even worth it. God can't hear you. God's not even trying to hear you. You know where you missed it last week. You know where you missed it last night. You know how you said this. You know how you thought that. The enemy's doing his job because he's the accuser of the brethren. But God needs us to be on our job and blessing him at all times. That's why the word says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Will and shall are absolutes. That means that no matter what, my will is set like flint, God, towards giving you praise. My will is set like flint towards saying yes to you, towards saying yes to what you have for me to do. Beloved, God needs us to have a yes in our spirit, a perpetual and eternal yes in the midst of the trials and tests that we have, a perpetual, eternal yes in the midst of the struggles that we face and go through. God loves us so much that, that he gave his only begotten son, the word says, that we who believe might have everlasting life. See, what Bartimaeus did is he activated the honor that made him an honorable son. He activated the believing in faith that God was going to move. And in the midst of those telling him no, he said yes, because he's like, as much as you all say no, God says yes, because God says to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. God says to enter into his courts with praise. God says to be thankful unto him and bless his name. And because God says these things, I'm going to do what it is that God said for me to do. Beloved, God needs you and I to make our minds up, to be all about our father's business, to do this thing because God is ready to move on our behalf, to do this thing because we're trying to get in position, get into the position, get into the birth position so that God can bring this thing on out so that God can guide us and direct us on how to push and, and direct us on how to breathe and, and direct us on how to turn and twist and do what we need to do to bring forth the ministry that's in us, to bring forth the blessing that's in us, to bring forth the best of him that's in us. God needs you and I, beloved, to understand that, that we are somebody. He needs you and I to understand that, well, one sense might be diminished. Other senses are even more sensitive. We've got to be sensitive to the spirit, beloved, in every aspect of our lives. We've got to be sensitive to the spirit and understand and know that God's ways are far above our ways and his thoughts far above our thoughts. And what he desires to do is meet us where we are and speak to us based on our faith based on the measure of faith that we do, the amount of faith that we're using, the amount of the measure of faith that we've activated. He wants to meet us there and expand that activation to the full measure of faith that he's given us. He's given you and I the measure of faith, beloved, to say to whatever mountain we're facing, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And as long as we do that and truly believe God, nothing shall be impossible to us because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And this is what Bartimaeus 
Jesus understood. He understood that even though the naysayers were saying, you need to be quiet. You need to shut up. You need to stop it. You make it a fool of yourself. Bartimaeus is saying, I'm determined and fully persuaded that nothing shall separate me from the love of God, which is found in Christ Jesus. So I'm going to cry out all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Messiah, I'm over here. I can't see you, but I feel you. I can't see you, but I know you're here. I can't see you, but my heart is leaping for joy because I know that you're here. My heart is leaping just like Elizabeth's heart leapt in her because of Mary showing up with, Christ, with the Christ child in her womb. I'm leaping because I know that my salvation is not. I know that there's something blessed coming my way. I know that blessings are coming into my presence. I know that deliverance is coming into my presence. God wants us to be that level of ready, that level of committed, that level of desperate church so that we can be all that God has called us to be because God wants us to follow him. He wants us to be in constant and lockstep with him to go where he goes. That's why Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, ye may be also. I'm here to let you know by the providence of God that there's no way that you will be where Jesus is unless and until, sir or ma'am, you say yes to Jesus. You've got to make up your mind. You've got to make up your heart. You've got to set your spirit face like Flint. You've got to be determined and set and desperate for God. You've got to say, Lord, I'm desperate for you today. I'm so desperate for you today, oh God, that I don't care who laughs at me. I don't care who doesn't go. I don't care who doesn't understand. I don't care what backlash might come. I need to be in right standing with you because I know that even when I die, to be absent from the body is to be present with you. And I want to make the right situation. I want to make the right decisions and take the right steps ahead of time proactively to be in right standing with you. That's why when Bartimaeus got Jesus' attention, because he was desperate and kept crying out, Jesus beckoned for, for, for him to come over. And they said, today is your lucky day. The, the, the Messiah yes, actually wants to see you. And they met and, and Jesus asked him, what would you have for me to do? Now, it was no secret what Bartimaeus did it, but what Bartimaeus needed rather. It was no secret what Bartimaeus wanted Jesus to do. But catch this, Jesus wanted Bartimaeus to speak it so that his faith would be in lockstep and agreement with what Jesus wanted to do to him. See, many times our struggles and our challenges and our shortcomings come because of our lack of faith. But I'm here to let you know this morning that something blessed this way cometh in your life, said God. Something blessed is coming to you. Something blessed in the way of breakthrough is coming to you. Something blessed in the way of deliverance is coming to you. Something blessed in the way of healing is coming to you. Something blessed in the way of victory is coming to you. But according to your faith, that's going to dictate the measure and manner of how it's received. That's going to dictate the measure and manner of how it's going to be manifested. And it starts if you don't know Jesus Christ was saying yes to Jesus, beloved. Something blessed is coming to you today. Something blessed has come to you today. Like Bartimaeus, you need to cry out for salvation saying, Lord, please open my eyes that I might see, that I might see you, that I might receive my sight, that I might receive my salvation, that I might receive my deliverance deliverance, that I might receive my healing, that I might receive my breakthrough. You open your mouth and begin to pro profess to God and proclaim to God what it is that you need. I'm here to let you know as a living witness by divine providence that if you do that, if when you pray, you believe and not doubt, you'll have whatsoever you say. The Bible lets us know that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that thou shalt be saved. I implore you, if you don't know Jesus Christ, to do it today by faith. Pray the prayer of faith right now. Do it right now and open your mouth and profess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Confess your faults to Almighty God. And I'm a living witness that God will move on your behalf. That God will do just like he did for Bartimaeus. He'll say, according to your faith, be it done unto you. And Bartimaeus immediately received this sight. The text went on to say, I declare and decree that if you say yes to Jesus today, if you don't know him, that and, and you mean it by faith, that this day you will receive your sight. This day you will see clearly your pathway from this life to the next. This day, you will be in a position where when you transition out of here, you will be with Jesus in paradise, waiting on that glorious day when your name is called and you hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. God wants us to understand today, beloved, that, that he loves us unconditionally, that he loves us passionately, that he loves us desperately and desires us to love him the same way. How about you? Have you said yes to Jesus today? Have you made up your mind that you're going to let Jesus be your everything? Have you made up your mind that you're going to go all the way with Christ?
Have you made up your mind that you're not going to let anything separate you from the love of God? If not, today is your day. Pray this prayer with me. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I come before you a sinner. I come before you understanding now that I've got to be desperate for you. Lord, I've tried everything else in life and has fallen short of meeting my need. But your word says, God, that you shall supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory, which are found in Christ Jesus. So, God, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I believe in my heart, God, that you raised him from the dead. You said if I do these things and believe by faith that I shall be saved. So, God, by faith, I declare and decree that I am saved. And I thank you for the blessings. I thank you for the breakthrough. I thank you for the victory. But most importantly, I thank you for eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to rejoice with you and I want to welcome you to the household of faith because that prayer was the most important prayer that you ever prayed in your life. And Jesus is saying, welcome, my son. Welcome, my daughter. Welcome into salvation. Welcome into a love relationship with me. Please email us and let us know about your conversion today and, and let us know how we can pray for you. You're going to see our email address in just a moment. And I want to hear from you so that we can pray for you, so that we can pray with you, so that we can encourage you and bless you. And, and, and we encourage you to find a Bible believing church. And, and we would gladly invite you to become a part of the Living Witness Ministries family. You're going to see the contact information in just a moment. Please reach out to us. Please let me hear from you today. Until next time, this is Pastor Derek Thomas, praising God with and for you and reminding you to be encouraged and to be determined because something blessed this way coming unto you. God bless. Living Witness Ministries is a church on the move dedicated to sharing the good news of Jesus Christ through the preached and taught word, community activism and outreach, and practical ministry designed to meet needs, bless hearts, save souls, and change lives. You can sow into the ministry via our cash app at dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. That's dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. Sow your seed into the good works and good ground of Living Witness Ministries today. And thank you for helping us reach the world with the life giving way. We pray that you were blessed by today's broadcast and would love to hear from you. If you have any prayer requests, praise reports, or would like to learn more about Living Witness Ministries, you can contact us by email at livingtowitness at gmail.com. That's the word living, the number two, witness at gmail.com or by phone at area code 404-955-8846. Again, that's area code 404-955-8846. Until next time, we encourage you to continue to live your life as a living witness.